You've been training for this for years. You know you're ready. You're standing on the door's threshold. You take a deep breath and bravely open it. You jump outside the International Space Station and into the vastness of space. Ah, this never gets old, you say on the transmitter device. You feel like a feather whenever moving through space. Except for the suit, of course. It's true what that guy told you one day. Astronaut suits limit your body's movement by 20%. For you, that means you've got a 20% higher chance of being clumsy in outer space, which is never good odds. There's not a lot of room for error during a spacewalk. You finally get to the docking port. You look around and see the part of the station that needs fixing. This is where other space shuttles dock when they come in from Earth or other planets. About a week ago, a shuttle coming from Jupiter miscalculated the landing and broke a piece of the port. You've attached the new shield to your suit's belt. Now all you've got to do is screw it on the station. You've spent hours training underwater to do this. You wore a heavy, hot, uncomfortable suit inside a pool in order to get the training you needed. Incoming! Sarah shouts on the transmitter. You don't even have time to ask what, as an absurdly fast storm of space debris catches you off guard. It shakes everything around you. You try to hold on tight to the strap that's keeping you safe, but oh no! A piece of debris just hit your helmet shield. Come in, Bob, are you okay? Sarah asks you through the radio. You got a bit shocked by the impact, but everything seems fine. The meteorites are finally gone, so you can focus on your task now. You pull the rope that's connecting the new docking shield closer to your body, but the other part of the rope has nothing on it. Zip. Nada. Oh my, you think to yourself. Hmm, come in, Sarah. We have a lost shield. I repeat, we have a lost shield. This is a pretty serious situation, and you are aware of it. Anything that falls into space can go into a collision route with the International Space Station or with other space vehicles. You try to remember your training, but your mind goes blank. This is worse than that one time you broke your girlfriend's favorite ceramic jar. Sarah, the other astronaut who's with you on the ship, is shouting words on the transmitter. Oh no, Bob. Tell me you didn't do this. This is a total catastrophe. I'm coming outside. You spot the shield under the ISS. It's the size of a medium-sized car door, and it's moving quite fast. Here's what can happen in this scenario. The shield could head back down to Earth and break into the atmosphere. It would probably catch fire and disintegrate on the way down, but anyways, it would make NASA and you look pretty bad. The other option is the car door-sized shield gains momentum, and it orbits all the way to hit the ISS, and you for that matter or some satellite that happens to be in a similar orbit. Here's the thing. If you ever thought that space was an infinite void, you got that part wrong. Since different countries started to build equipment strong enough to travel in space, space has been more crowded than ever. Not with people, but with satellites, asteroids, and space debris. You were surprised when you learned that Earth receives meteorite showers every single day, but they're so small that no one on the surface of the planet notices it. They usually turn to ashes before hitting the ground, but that's not all. What just happened to you on this mission has happened on several other missions before. Astronauts keep losing stuff in outer space. So much so that NASA had to create a division to track down and monitor the orbit of all debris that is just floating carelessly around. You couldn't believe it when someone told you that there are over 23,000 softball-sized pieces of debris roaming around in space. And if we're talking about smaller objects, then that number goes up to half a million. As you were about to unstrap yourself and dangerously venture through outer space without any protection, you notice Sarah has beat you to it. You can't let her do this alone, so you decide to tag along. FYI, this is against every NASA handbook and training you ever received in your life. But you think, if this works in sci-fi movies, it must work for us. Even though we all know that's very far from the truth. Sarah's close to the debris shield, but her body weight makes her orbit in a completely different direction. Okay, you think to yourself. This is your turn to shine and be a hero. You try moving your arms like you would do underwater, but there's no friction in space. Duh. You can't butterfly swim your way to rescue the rogue equipment. You try to contact Sarah, but she doesn't come in. I guess you're on your own now. 
for some reason, you start to orbit in a similar route as the floating car door shield. It must be the amount of stuff you've got strapped onto yourself. Or maybe it was the breakfast burrito you had that morning. You feel like you're George Clooney in the movie Gravity. No, better yet, you feel like Obi-Wan Kenobi. Yes, you're feeling as strong and powerful as a Jedi right now. You keep your hands stretched before your body, hoping you'll gently collide with the space debris. And three, two, one, and the landing was successful. Just joking, but yes, you managed to dock onto the debris. Hooray. Now what? You think? Guess you needed to have gone through that plan of yours a little bit more, huh? You still have no way of steering the debris. And now, you have no way to contact Mission Control and tell them the object, and yourself, are en route to somewhere. Don't get scared. You didn't come this far to get scared. What's the best thing you can do? First, take a mental picture of the Earth. It never disappoints from up here. Then, you try to play out the possible scenarios that could happen in the situationship you're in. Your normal body weight would not be enough to get you out of Earth's orbit. In the hypothetical scenario in which this did happen, you'd probably be vacuumed into Venus's orbit and spend a quite unpleasant period of your life around immense heat. Even though in Greek mythology, Venus represents love, there is nothing lovely about orbiting close to this planet, and you know this. If you got too close, your spacesuit would never be able to take on the heat. It's only made to sustain temperatures of around 250 degrees Fahrenheit tops, and Venus's atmosphere can heat up to 700 degrees Fahrenheit. But honestly, the worst case scenario is much simpler than that. Your spacesuit could decide to drown your ears, nose, and mouth in water. Yup, this has happened on spacewalks before yours. You see, in order to keep your spacesuit chill and cool, the suit relies on a gallon's worth of water that makes up for a cooling system. This system, which is supposed to send recycled air into the back of your helmet, does leak sometimes. And since you're stranded in the middle of the big nowhere, you'd have only that nowhere to run. But wait, what's that popping up on the horizon? It's a modular space shuttle. You try shouting, but nobody can hear you outside your helmet. You wave with your hands, uh, but it's coming straight at you. Finally, it took longer than I wished to find you, Sarah said. Apparently, she made it back to the space station just in time to catch you before you went definitely rogue. Guess I'll be losing some astronaut points for this little misadventure, huh? You say. And yes, you definitely will. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.